Welcome to Bumblecast Live. I am your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Kraus. Hello. Welcome to the Bumblecast on a on a Sunday. 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 Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. Yes. Awesome Claw, Sunday sucks. <laughs> we have returned for our monthly uh live stream and uh ian we already have a ton of questions we've been we've been gathering them for the last half hour and uh there's a lot so yeah i I think without further ado we should go ahead and jump right into uh these super chats we've already got super chats coming in even man you guys are awesome super quick super quick big thanks to jennifer r for moderating things yes um any questions that are asked during the time period that we don't get to will be added to the regular standard Q and a Q and will be answered on the show eventually. Well, hopefully and if you want we'll, priority, we'll get there. So yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, as Kyle has already mentioned, super chats kind of bump you to the front of the line. So here we go. Super chats. I'm bumble gas live here on the show sponsored by our lovely patrons over at patreon.com backslash bumblecast and Kofi.com backslash bumblecast. Let's do it. All righty. Let's start with this one from Whisk Cheese. Is Void still alive? Also, can he make a return? Uh, I'd have to double check my Sonic Shuffle lore, but I'm pretty sure at the end of the game, Void and Lumina reconstitute together into Illumina. So in that regard, I think Void is gone, but void came into being because Illumina split in half to begin with. So if someone were to split Illumina, presumably he would come back. So I don't know, maybe that's certainly something that I keep in mind in that story that I have yet to pitch because I totally want to do it. It Mm -hmm. certainly doesn't involve a Knights crossover. Cough, cough. No, of course not. Never, ever. All right, here's a question from PC the Unicorn. What would Charmy and Marine's dynamic be like? Um, super adorable and wholesome, but also really obnoxious. Mm-hmm. I think anyone who has kids would just kind of nod along going, yep, that's exactly what that's like. <laughs> nice. They would be rambunctious, precocious, full of vim and vigor, and antics, antics galore. Yeah. Pretty much. Here's System 509 with a question. Do Surge and Kit keep Starline up at night like a pair of troubled kids, or does he just, like, <laughs> switch them off at night? <laughs> I I absolutely have to shout out Natalie Fontaine's little animation that's going around on Twitter where <laughs> Surge is knocking the rings together and creating sparks and keeping Starline up. That is freaking brilliant. I love it. I have watched it on loop entirely too much. Um <laughs> As for how their dynamic works, we're just one issue into imposter syndrome. I don't even want them to do it like a jokey answer because we're so early into it. So let, let's get through the rest of the miniseries and then we can theory craft. Yes. And we got a question here from Snooty Boy 55. If Nicole and Belle were to ever interact, how would that play out? Hmm. That would be potentially even more wholesome than Charmy and Marine. It very well could be. Um, let's assume post reboot Nicole. And so she has a fair handle on who she is and what she is and her place in the world. So she would be a very nice mentor for bell. I yeah. would imagine. I could see that. And a question from Edward nine, nine Oh nine. Hey, Ian, I'm currently writing a story about shadow-stopping Mephilus from mind-controlling the world and mentoring a cat named Zoom in the process. Do you think this concept has potential? Uh, I can't really help you out there because that's very, very much a fan idea with fan characters and whatnot. So let me put it this way. If you want to do some kind of fan work like that, do it. Don't look for my approval. Just do it. If you have the passion for it, if this is what you want to do, then do. At the absolute worst, it is a learning experience. At best, you're going to create something that a lot of people will also enjoy. So just do it, man. Just (laughs) embrace it. Do it to the best of your ability. And I wish you all the best. 
All right, and this will be the last super chat for a little bit that we'll get to. Uh, there's a couple more in queue, but I also want to get to some of the standard questions. So uh, let's get into this one from Dapper Sphinx. You can project a one clause sentence thought regarding Sonic into the minds of everyone working at Sega. Moral implications aside, what is it? <laughs> I like that caveat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, shoot. One clause directive. It's, it's also, this is also directed to both of us, apparently. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I can say what I want. Work. What is Sega going to do? Fire me? <laughs> <laughs> um, embrace the past. Yeah, dang it, you stole mine, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much what I was going to say. Come on. <laughs> yes. That's but, that's very broad. It can open up a lot of doors. <coughs> Freedom fights. <coughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, No, but Ian, you hate them. Obviously. Oh, yeah. Obviously. It's all part of my grand conspiracy. Your grand plan to do something? I don't know exactly what your grand plan is, but uh, somebody so, you ask. somebody does, but I don't know it, but somebody does. Maybe do you even know your grand plan? <laughs> I don't think you do. How bold of you to assume I have a plan. I know. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, hmm. I'm going to have a big thonk about that one. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into the standard questions. Uh, we got one here from our good buddy, Scruffy Matt. Howdy, Scruffy. Okay. So it's games night at Casa de Mumble slash Casa de NGI. What do you break out? Do you go for board games or card games? Wingspan, Exploding Kittens, maybe Organ Attack? But of course, you could also go with video games as well. What with your Mario Parties or your Jackbox Party Packs and your various other party games? So what will it be? I think between the two of us, it'd be video games first and foremost. Well, yeah. Smash Brothers I mean, would probably be the a big one. Yeah, last time... We were all over at your place. We broke out Rock Band. Yes, Rock Band is a very common uh, occurrence at my house. Seem, so it will be, uh, it will continue. I seem to recall I was kind of forced onto the mic because I can carry a tune. And it's like, oh, Ian, you can sing. You're doing vocals. And I'm like, ah, well, yes, no. performing in front of people. We're friends. Ah, no, ah. no, no. We, I asked you. I didn't tell you. <laughs> Okay, maybe I just I said, panicked into thinking it was a directive. I said, I, yeah, I was going to say, I was like, I was like, what do you want to play in? Do you want to sing? Do you want to do something else? It's up to you. I I don't pressure, I try not to pressure people into doing it if you didn't want to do it. <laughs> well, I get, maybe I defaulted to the vocals because everything else requires a degree of rhythm, and that I absolutely do not have. <laughs> yeah. We would have failed five bars in. So, yeah, all right. That it, makes more sense. It well and truly is a rhythm game. So, you know. You, mm -mm. you do need some sense of rhythm. You can put it on easy, though. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be about it. Um, otherwise, I don't know. I have the Mega Man board game. I've only played it once. Ooh. So uh, you need to come over, Ian, so we can play the Mega Man board game. Yeah. It's a weird game. It's The rules are a little interesting. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's neat. You're converting Mega Man to a board game. I can't imagine that being an easy transition. Yeah, well, it it kind of works. It's it's a little hard to get the hang of, but it's not bad. And you know, it's just it's Mega Man, so that's pretty cool. Here's a question from Gab Sam. Question: Now that Marine has been confirmed on having water powers, and considering they are an indirect team, what would be the perfect name for Blaze Silver Marine's team? Silver and Marine's uh... team. Number one, this is not confirmed. The screenshot from the Encyclopedia that's going around makes it pretty bloody clear that it's not really sure what she did. The ellipsis and a question mark there kind of, you know, say, eh, perhaps I should have included a shrug emoji to make it incredibly clear that we don't know what it is. <laughs> well, so, shouldn't they have, would they have been like, no, she doesn't have those if when they were looking it over or that's what i was hoping you know as things got reviewed i was hoping to get notes back saying no yes no cut this clarify that and that got through so 
weird i don't know if that's a we want to keep it vague or uh yeah we don't know either just run with it so that's what's in the book mm. and i don't know i i thought the phrasing the phrasing gave me a chuckle what do i know uh as for a team well let's just assume she's got some kind of uh hydrokinesis so blaze has pyrokinesis and silver has psychokinesis so they are clearly the mundane team yes or <laughs> call or, them the psych ward i don't know <laughs> or just team blaze that'd yeah, be it's, it's that's too easy though i know <laughs> but it's true <laughs> And here's a question for Star Scrambled. For the past while, I found it amusing that Knuckles hasn't shown up in the main comic since August of last year. Any fond thoughts on what he might be doing during the current arcs? Ah, taking a break. <laughs> I mean, Having leading, a chill. The, leading the whole army for world independence has got to be taxing on a fella. Poor, so. poor guy can't catch a break. Not a single so, break. Sure, he kind of dumped all that in Amy's lap, but, you know, he he at least gets to chill out for a bit. He doesn't feel bad about it. <laughs> okay, maybe he feels a little bad about it. He's he not a would, complete jerk. Once you point it out. He's yeah, not a complete he's... jerk. It's like, okay, I'm done. Well, there's more to do. I'm done. Knuckles, I, okay, you're gone now. Yeah. Oh. Or Knuckles. And also, Knuckles, you jerk. <laughs> Here's one from Space Plant Studio. What are you most excited for professionally in the coming year and personally? Uh, I can't talk about it. <laughs> That's kind of what I figured, yes. <laughs> this is very much hashtag knowing smile territory. Um, mm -hmm. It's been a wild ride. All of it. Yeah. And... I I hope everyone enjoys one in particular. I really need to get back to it and get the next round of uh, scrutiny on it going. But it's been very, very busy. Uh, man, all this vague talking is obnoxious and eating. I'm the one who knows what's going on. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it. Sh we shouldn't have to wait too much longer, I think for at least some of this to see the light of day. So bear with me, bear with me, but it's, it's good stuff. I'm, I'm excited for it. Yes. This thing that I am being, these things, plural, that I'm being so vague about. Of course. And uh, here's this question from Zastando. If you do a comic on Dragon Ball and that you must give to Goku or Vegeta a new form, which it will be. Uh <sighs> I guess traditionally new forms kind of go to Goku. Vegeta's usually catching up. Um, we're taking variants thereof, what with the whole ultra instinct, ultra ego thing lately. I don't really know what to do with that, though, because I thought they kind of had already mined that cave when they got to Super Saiyan 3. And I did like the stipulation uh the the hoops you had to jump through to ascend to super saiyan god i thought that was at least an interesting way of s explaining why they hadn't reached that point yet until he internalized it and he can do it just willy-nilly and then now it's blue so it's even more defunct and vegeta just does it on his own and say hey, 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 hey. <laughs> i don't know i i liked ultra instinct more than i thought i would but I honestly think the whole transformation thing has reached its limit. But what do I know? They're they're going to pull something else <laughs> out with a hat and I'll go, oh, that's kind of cool. And just kind of run along with it. <laughs> ultra instinct it makes me think of ultra combo. <laughs> uh, yes. Love, love the yeah. killer instinct. Sounds pretty good. I like that. All right, let's switch over to a super chat question real quick here from Frost the White Lion. What are your favorite live action TV series? Oh, goodness. It has been so long since I sat down and watched regular TV. <laughs> regular live action 
TV, I guess, to be more specific. Hmm. Um, yeah, it, it's, you know, the I last know, thing I watched. Both of us really watch. We do watch a lot of animation, but like, I think the last live action series I followed with any dedication was Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. And, All the Marvel stuff. I get I okay yeah there, there's the Marvel cinematic stuff yeah um I kind of lump that all into one gigantic amorphous blob that is MCU but yeah that that's that's true um then again you can tell how much impact that had because I went to Game of Thrones first mm. <laughs> yeah 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 I get it I get it um I don't know. I'm really liking Legends of Tomorrow. I've, mm. I've 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 been watching it for a few years now, and it's it's a very entertaining show. It's just it's just silly. It's just gone off. It's kind of gone off the rails into silliness, but it's got a lot of heart. So you know, I appreciate that. The characters are lovely. So it's just you know, it's got this. It's, it treats its characters very well, while also having uh, an absolute uh, insane plotline. So I like it. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, that's about it, really. Uh, I'll go with that one. Here's one from Marshall H. Uh, do you have any insight or theories about the giant walker model in Shadow of the Hedgehog's cryptic castle level? It's the giant bone demon on the grind rails at the end, for your information. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> you know, like the ghosts, they're they're self-explanatory, they're ghosts. But just this what is that thing? Like even Eggman is freaked out by it. Like he's not like, oh, what is this bottom and pest? It's like, what is that? And all you can do is run from I don't know, man. I, I one of these days we need to like Evan or I need to just dive into the spoopy side of Sonic and play with that, you know, because there's there's stuff to be had. There's fun to be had there. But... Oh, yeah, there's some weirdness. <laughs> That's for sure. And here's another super chat from Whisk Cheese. Thank you very much. Are Surge and Kit immortals since Starline made them? And are they siblings in a way or partners? Uh, we're going to get into all of that nitty gritty uh, later on in imposter syndrome so keep reading yeah sorry you got to keep buying and reading the books no spoilers here and here's another super chat from sega genesis 1991 hey guys what does clutch like to do in his free time when he's not running illegal chow fights and racing <laughs> um i think this would probably be better suited for evan since clutch is her creation so grain of salt with this one, but I imagine he enjoys the finer things in life. You know, a good meal, a good concert, um, maybe even look at a good, a nice art gallery for some culture and kind of decide what he wants and figuring out whether he can get it legit or if it's going to fall off the back of a truck, you know, <laughs> somehow winds up in his den. Can't help what happens. Fate is a fickle thing. Indeed. But I would imagine that's how Clutch would go. Um, but, you know, again, Evan introduced him, and I would default to more what she thinks. But I think we're on the same wavelength. All right. Here's one from Greenbit. Is the Sonic universe connected to DC and Marvel? Uh, it depends on how hard you want to get on officially no official lore so officially no but if you want to get into like i don't know marvel's crazy multiverse and dc's mandela thingy and and it's multiverse too <laughs> <Don't> yeah <forget. laughs> and the vague nature of the current sonic multiverse then it's maybe maybe up to you you can headcanon whatever you want that's the beauty of headcanons so have fun. Here's one from Francisca Ars Francisca A. Uh, what are the IDW villains, including newcomers Surge and Kit, favorite food and drinks? 
Oh, let's see. Rough and Tumble are fast food junkies. They they don't really care as long as it's like drowning in salt and sugar and grease. They're good. <laughs> uh, Starline is a man of refined tastes. And going off of what I said about Clutch earlier, I imagine they would actually go to the same fine dining establishment and then again get into a slap fight over the prime table. Um, after the dust settles and the casualties have been cleared, they decide to agree to alternating Saturdays, but it's still the same five-star place. Mimic? Mimic, I don't think, cares. He's more about... Street food? Street food. Like vendors on the street? Stalls? Never mind. What's going on here? <laughs> Sorry. Um... <laughs> we got a Leah drop in. Hi, Leah. <laughs> Kyle says hi. 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 <laughs> Mimic, I don't think really cares. He's more about you know what he needs to get through the day. He's he's not he's a detail oriented person, but that's about the job. He's not someone who enjoys things except his own proficiency. And Surge, spicy stuff. Like anything spicy, your curries, your tamales, anything that hurts her as much as she wants to hurt other people. She enjoys the burn. Spicy chili dogs? Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> and Kit also likes spicy things because that's what Serge likes and he likes what Serge likes. And yes, he's crying, but that's only because he enjoys it so much. And can he have another one, Serge? No? Okay. Oh, boy. Oh boy. <laughs> this sounds uh, ominous. Uh, and we got a question here from Dove. If Kit, Surge, and Starline went on vacation, where would they go? Would Starline insist on something educational or allow them to have fun? <laughs> you're, you're assuming that Starline is the one behind this. He doesn't vacation, he works. And then for fun, he does some other form of work. Surge would have to like kidnap him. Well, you'd think this would be like a, you know, a, a learning experience for them. This would be, he's working, he's observing how they interact in a uh, public setting. Oh, so it's not so much a vacation as it's a field test for the two of them. Exactly. But they think it's you a vacation. You said we were going to a spa. No, I said you're going to a sparring match. You missed the ring part <laughs> and the match. Also, you're up next. Go fight. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Wow, this is Drags just drags a... him off to some like secluded fighters' island. Wow. See how long they survive. They end up burning down the whole thing. <laughs> yes, even the mountain. They somehow set fire to the mountain, burn it down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeez, the cycle of abuse is real. Man, it's dark. <laughs> you haven't even read issue three yet. <laughs> All righty, we got a, a super chat question from Sonic Mania twenty ninety nine. Uh, you think you can ask Sega to story write an official Sonic game? The last one was trash. <laughs> 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 <Dang>. uh, <laughs> let's not bite the hand that feeds here on this publicly accessible. <laughs> online for all time <laughs> well you didn't say recording. it recording no, i no, no, i but... vocalized it but it was said by sonic <laughs> media 2099 <laughs> let's just say i i myself would prefer to be a little more genteel in my assessments but yes uh, th i don't go to them if they wanted me they would have to come to me that's not a wow. That sounded extremely arrogant. <laughs> I was gonna say you're. Like, Ooh, are, let are me you, walk that back a minute. Are you threatening them? I'm. Kidding, I'm <laughs> kidding. I know you weren't. <laughs> no. Uh, let, let's try that again. It's very funny. I am not. I am not in the position to say, "Hey, can I write the next game, please and thank you." It would have to be Sega saying, "Okay, we have some. We have heard of this Ian guy. Let's give him a shot." It, it, it's their call. 
they are the ones in control. I mm. <laughs> someone's gonna cl- someone's gonna clip that one out of context. It's going to be very oh, it's been very like that funny. All month. It's very not? funny. It's very funny. Add it to the pile. Yeah, just get, throw another one on there. Jeez, <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> You have all you, tons of recordings of Ian just saying stuff. Yes, you can do whatever. You can cut it however you want and make it sound uh, awful. You can make it sound horrible. Like he's the most horrible person in the universe. But, uh, you know, whatever. It's not your fault people don't listen to this show. They should. They should. But they don't. Except you guys. You guys are cool. The guys who are listening right now. You're cool. Thank you. And here's one from Clara V. You said Archie is not canon to the games, but said the games are in the Archieverse in an interview. Were you referring to a kind of Archie game Sonic in the Archieverse? Oh, God, how long ago was that? Um, <laughs> I think it's more of that kind of like a rectangle is a, a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle isn't a square type of scenario mm-hmm. where as game material comes out, it needs to be incorporated into the tie-in project, you know, like if the games go in a certain direction, the spinoff material has to reflect that to be compatible with the main brand. So whatever we did in the Archie days was kind of exclusively within that bubble. But as Sega came up with new material, we would have to incorporate that into Archie. So Archie Sonic is not canon to Sega, but Sega is canon to Archie. That kind of thing. <laughs> All right. And here's this one from Pen Dolce. How much time exactly did Dr. Starline spend trying to get Dr. Eggman's memory back? And how much time did they spend being in Final Egg? Um, I don't want to put a hard number on it because that applies unfortunately an unworkable amount of continuity to sonic because as we've covered on the show in the past he shouldn't be 15 anymore by any stretch but (sighs) so it goes but now he spent long enough for the other storylines to play out and uh i imagine the turnaround time for eggman getting back on his feet launching uh, the face ship and dumping the metal virus was fairly short. Like he got right back in the saddle and got back to his evil ways. <laughs> and here's a question from Edward nine, nine Oh nine, a super chat question. Thank you again. Uh, which Sonic games mainline or spinoff are Canon to the comic. And also there's another part of this question here. So hold on a second. Um, okay. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, this is also um someone asked this a little bit later, pretty much. Okay. So yeah, go ahead. Um, um, are all of the classic games Sans Mania canon to the main IDW timeline? Yeah. Maybe this is kind of nebulous right now because what is canon in classic, especially, yeah. is kind of up in the air right now. I mean, classic wasn't really a thing until fairly recently. So I would say, you know, Sonic one, two, three knuckles, CD are all and mania are all clearly, you know, part of the mix. Um, I'm under the understanding that Sonic R is as well, which still baffles me, which is why I bring it up every time. (laughs) Other than that, I don't know. I hope that we could play with all the toys, but we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. And we got a question here from Darker. Which form is stronger, Hyper or Ultra? (sighs) Ultra. (laughs) I mean, arguably Ultra, since he was able to open a rift in dimensions and Hyper is just like bigger, faster, stronger, super. Hyper is just, you leave after images of yourself everywhere. And you're more blinky. Sweet. Yeah. (laughs) And you got that screen clear and double jump flash, which is freaking awesome. Oh, yeah, uh, that is true. 
I don't know. They're both so ill-defined. Let's just say they're both cool. Yes. And they've both been lost to time. Just like uh, everything else, you know? It's like a Dragon Ball Z transformations, you know? Which one is stronger mm. than the other? I don't know. They're all pretty cool. <laughs> Here's a question from Gab Sam. The Topaz explode. Why was Sonic sent to Blaze's dimension and made him lost the memory? It was never explained. Because Warp Topaz opens portals between space and time, and it was being supercharged. So when it went, pfft, it shot Sonic clear through dimensions into Blaze's world. Luckily, Why Blaze's it... world specifically? Because that's a lot easier to handle in two parts than some random other dimension we have to make up from scratch. <laughs> Luckily, it was in the uh, same time period that Blaze and everyone exists. No. Yeah. Yeah. Convenient. Convenient. And we got a super chat question here from Speedweed. Thank you, buddy. All right, boys. Weird one. What would happen if Susie Deltarune from the Deltarune franchise and Serge the Tenric from the IDW Sonic comic met? <laughs> mm, I think explosions, oh, dear. probably. Yeah. Yeah, there things would not be standing with at least a one kilometer radius. <laughs> wow, um, that close. Now, I've only played the good route in Deltarune, so I'm not quite sure how things play out for Susie if you play the bad route. I don't know if she becomes more delinquent-ish, but... Uh, I prefer to think is of Susie as someone who is you know, misunderstood, someone who's an outlier who just needs a friend, who also just happens to be a horrible lizard monster, incredibly violent. But that can be channeled in positive ways. <laughs> so eventually, Susie would wise up and realize Surge is a bad influence and put her in her place. And then nothing would be standing in a two kilometer radius because the fight would just extend. Hmm. Interesting. Here's a question from Mecca from the 80s. What happened to Dr. Finitivus and warping technology in the Mobius 30 Years Later story? Seems like the technology was lost since nobody was using it, and Finitivus is probably dead. Did we cover this on a recent Bumblecast, or do I just remember it reading the question? It seems vaguely familiar, but maybe not. I'm not sure. Eh, well, <laughs> obviously oh well. we don't remember, so um, I'm not sure what happened to them to be honest i can't give you like a a hard and fast ah this is what i would have done because we didn't get there with it and that's one of the many 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 reasons why the 30 years later future couldn't be canon because stuff in the present you know kept happening and changing things you can't be beholden to a future unless that is your present and or it's one large constructed narrative but that would be super hard to coordinate with multiple creators on a licensed book so infinitivus by the very nature of his nastiness yeah probably got killed off in some climactic battle somewhere and perhaps the warp ring technology went with him he put a fail safe <laughs> in it where if he can't have it nobody can have it i, I don't know i'm spitballing here oh, okay apparently we answered this a couple questions a couple episodes ago so okay well but yeah, <laughs> that's why it, it sounds again. familiar yeah. boy i hope the answers were the same because otherwise i'm gonna look like an idiot <laughs> well you know it's hard to not do that on the internet it, it's just it's just how it is man it's just how it is and here's some more amazing people with amazing super chats including this one from dove who says, wait, wait, the warp topaz affects space and time? It can time travel? It's a TARDIS? Starline the Doctor? <laughs> <laughs> now, its properties are very much timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly. Mm -hmm. uh, Space-time in so much as you are moving through space at the same time. Like, if you're moving from point A to point B virtually instantaneously then you are also transporting through time that much, right? Yes. Someone who actually understands physics helped me out here. <laughs> and the crystalline, uh, 
the crystalline uh, structure helps with the flux dispersal. So, also, sure, we'll go with that. Yes, absolutely. Here's one from L Law. I was wondering what Zobotnik's end goal was with Scourge as he was trying to rehabilitate him. What, which also makes me wonder about what the Zone Jail does with rehabilitated prisoners in general. Um, I would like to imagine that, unlike so many other Robotnik alts, Zobotnik actually did want to reform individuals and send them back. Not necessarily in an altruistic sort of way, but in a spreading law and order to the multiverse sort of way. So if he could get Scourge to clean up his act and be basically Sonic and unleash him on Anti-Mobius, he would have one of the greatest heroes ever fighting a inherently corrupt world, bringing ostensibly more law and order. <laughs> So any zone jail inmates who could be reformed, I would imagine would be returned to their dimension to seed good and righteousness from whence they came. Yes. I'm being asked uh, clowns in the, in the chat clowns. Yes. Clowns. Um, sure. We'll go with uh, that. Clowns. It just says clowns. That's all. That's all it says. It's just asking me clowns okay all right anyway <laughs> they're just asking clowns and i'm like yeah yeah sure <laughs> are you asking if i'm a clown because the answer is yes anyway <laughs> we got another super chat here from pc the unicorn thank you very much a very old sonic game manual or magazine implies that sonic may have feelings for amy but is just shy about it what are your thoughts on that idea yeah i feel like that tracks um given what we saw in Sonic X um, and trying to think of other examples in game, like kind of adventure one. Uh, she kind of went off the rails in heroes. So I don't like referencing that one so much, but uh, in general, yeah, I feel like it's more like he doesn't want to settle down or commit to anything, but he also doesn't want to be, intentionally a jerk <laughs> so he ultimately defaults to yeah i'll settle this later move on which is very much in his nature yes all right here's one from a super chat question another one from edward 9909 is the show sonic x a part of the comic universe instead of the adventure games also if you want to use my shadow idea you can <laughs> I appreciate that, but legally that ain't going to fly. <laughs> and and no, this is dead. <laughs> that too. But uh, no, Sonic X is not canon to the IDW comics. Alrighty. Here's a question from Sam S. Have you ever knowingly submitted work you weren't happy or satisfied with? Particularly Sonic, but if you have other examples, those are fine. Yeah. And... <sighs> I don't want to like name names in in some cases. It's not entirely your doing, but also no, maybe it's like, it's... uh, maybe in retrospect, you've kind of had some thoughts. I don't know. You've told oh, me a well, few things. You know, in but... retrospect, sure. I'd go back and revise everything I've ever touched. <laughs> now, what was I thinking back then? Clearly I only know what I'm doing in the now, but, um, yeah, there were storylines and particular issues where we had to, do something for the license or the editor wanted things to go a certain way and basically just said, that's how we're doing it. Uh, and this is with multiple publishers over the years. This is not like any one person or one instance. And that's just the nature of being a freelance writer. You got to roll with it. Do the best with what you're given. That said, I have had an incredible amount of creative control and input over the years, I'm not complaining in the slightest, but you know, it is a group effort and sometimes you got to give. All righty. Here's a question from slashy. Oh, this one's to me. Oh, to, to Kyle. Have you considered getting a soundboard for the Bumblecast? sound effects can turn a podcast <laughs> from a snooze fest to comedy hour. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. 
Bob. Bob. <laughs> Why have a why have a soundboard when I can make whatever sounds are necessary or anyone else in the room for that matter? <laughs> uh, let me think. I mean, I did <laughs> I did have an instance earlier where I really you said law and order and I really wanted to go bum bum, <laughs> but uh, I didn't. I didn't get the chance to before you moved on. And let's see what else. <laughs> I mean, you know, I got some things here and there, but no, no, we, we're not going to turn this into a morning zoo podcast. It might be funny for a little bit, but, you know, it might, it might also get a little exhausting after a while. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, nah. Unless you want me to, Ian, then I'll figure something out, but nah. Uh, nah. I can see the appeal, but it's also one of those things where you have to be quick on the draw. Yeah. You have to know what you want to do with these, because otherwise you miss the moment. Yes. And it's like, why didn't you use this funny joke sound here? And it's like, well, we didn't think of it. Although, although sometimes the not using it or using it incorrectly as part of the joke and part of what makes it funny. So, you know, it can, it can work out either way, but I mean, if that's like, this show is not set in stone. No, you know, comment on videos, email us, tweet us. If you want us to do a soundboard, we can look into it. You know, let me know what you want to hear and we can try and figure something out. Maybe depending on what you want. I don't know. One of my favorite jokes though is, um, there's a streamer, it's Joel from Vine Sauce. Uh, one of his, he got a soundboard and one of his actual, it's actually just a very funny joke. I don't know why, because I'm like two years old, you know, mentally. <laughs> but uh, every time he goes to sneeze, <laughs> he says, oh, excuse me, I got to sneeze. Then he mutes himself and uh, hits the fart with reverb button. <laughs> oh, Lord. And I don't know, it makes me laugh every time. <laughs> Uh, uh anyway uh i watch i watch the highlights that one guy i don't i don't uh, get the chance to watch joel's full streams he he streams a lot and he streams a long time so anyway pc the unicorn is here with a question since starline is a hardcore eggman fanboy where does he stand on the eggman slash robotnik naming convention he calls him dr eggman but how does he feel about the name robotnik uh, he will be the first to tell you, you know, at a party, unbidden. Did you actually know his true name is Ivo Robotnik? But uh, the fact that Eggman adopted that name to rob Sonic of the teasing ability is just so empowering and inspiring that he will honor that and he will use the name Eggman with dignity and respect and reverence. Sure. Something like that. And here's another one from Pandulce. What is Dr. Starline's guilty pleasure? Is there something he enjoys that he doesn't want to admit at all? Hmm. He has a flair this for the is a dramatic. Family show and everything that immediately comes to mind is funny, but also not appropriate. Whoa. Hey, uh, whoa. Dang, whoa. <laughs> That that escalated quickly. <laughs> uh. <laughs> he likes sappy movies. The one about the you know the little dog and the little cat who make it across country and oh, okay trade stupid little quips that are clearly just dubbed over animal footage. But family family films, Homeward Bound, they, The Incredible they persevere. Journey. <laughs> They have a dream and they strive for it. It gets them every time. And yes, he'd shove them into a badnik if Eggman asked him to. But you know, for now, they strive. <laughs> I don't care if it's the same movie just recycled 17 times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, now you're just uh, you're just putting more fuel on the fire for the demand for Bumblecast after dark. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's one from Censored. What would Sally Acorn, modern version, and Mina Mongoose be like at 18 years old? Not too terribly different from where they are now, I wouldn't imagine. <laughs> Sally, Possibly like, slightly taller. Isn't Sally like 16? 
Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I kind of depends on it's what like kind of antics years. happen in the intervening. I mean, two years. two years, two years at that age is a while, but I still don't think it would be a major shift. I mean, yeah, a lot can happen in two years, but I also feel like they are fairly comfortable in who they are the last time we saw them. Yeah. And you know how ages in the Sonic universe are. Yeah. Weird and strange. Yeah, a a little wiser, a little more storied, but I can't imagine they'd be that much different. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm being asked how many questions we should take today because we're over 150. <laughs> um, we we go for two we, hours. We go for a couple hours. We still got. We're only 45 minutes in, so we've got a while to go. So, um, but we will not get through 150 of the standard questions. So, uh, I would say from this point out, any questions you guys ask, um, they're going to have to be deferred to. Another time. So thank you, everyone, for all of your support and everything. But uh, we will have to stop the questions for now, unless you uh, were still accepting Super Chats. But other than that, we will uh, will hold the questions. So. All right. Let's go ahead and carry on here with this one from Vlad C. When will we see beloved fan favorite character and Twitter takeover extraordinary Yakker the White Wisp come back in IDW Sonic? <laughs> uh, I don't know, but he seems like an easy enough inclusion. I mean, the Wisps seem to have enough juice to move their planet back into whatever orbit from whatever star system it was from. So I could see him beaming himself back to the planet whatever it's called for a visit (laughs) or maybe they hop on a rocket and they go to planet whisper vacation sure why not might as well here's one from msp 169 the metal virus but instead everyone is a clown scarier or funnier (laughs) and for me i have there's a question for me on this too but you go ahead first it's both i mean Clowns can be creepy, man. Yeah. Yeah. And then for me, what are some of your favorite podcasts? Honestly, I have not listened to podcasts in quite a while. I used to listen to a lot because uh, I had a lot of time on my hands to sit there and listen to a lot of podcasts. So I used to listen to a lot, but I have not been really listening to many, if any, lately. Um... I would say that I, I really did enjoy listening to Campaign 2 of Critical Role. So I, I very much enjoyed that. Um, it's a long, long show, though. Um, hmm. Let's see, what else did I enjoy? Uh, I mean, it's been it's been a while. Uh, let me see what I still have. I'm still subscribed to them all. I just don't get the chance to listen. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, the Completely Unnecessary Podcast with uh, Pat the NES Punk and his buddy Ian, ironically. Uh, they talk about a lot about a video game stuff and uh, have some very funny, funny, uh, funny things going on, especially with when it comes to a certain uh, vaporware console. <laughs> that's currently becoming the kind of joke of the retro gaming community. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I'll go with those two for now. I'll say I enjoyed those two. And we got a question here from Team Kingdom Key. Is Shadow ever tempted to go back and try to use his blood as a base for a cure for the virus that plagued Maria? She might be gone, but he could save countless others from her fate. Um, Shadow is not the sciencey mindy type. He wouldn't be able to do it himself. But I could see someone saying, hey, Shadow, why don't we uh, finish Gerald's grand work here? And I don't mean blowing up the planet. 
the 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 other thing, the save people thing, and I would I would hope he'd be amenable to that. Hmm. And we got a question here from Certified Nobody. So what's up with Infinite? Actually dead? Usable in the comics now that he's in speed battle? Is all of this new info thanks to Sega changing their position on him? What what you see is what you get in the Encyclopedia, that screenshot that's going around. Um, that is as clear-cut an answer as I could get. It's kind of like Marine's powers. So we'll see what develops from there. Here's a question from Alec J. May I ask, how do you think a fight between Silver and Darth Vader would go down? This is a matchup I've been wondering about for a while and would like your opinion on it. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Who can fo- force choke the other first? <laughs> <laughs> like, Vader has the killer instinct, but I would think Silver actually has a higher power yield. Get Just going by what we've seen in the movies versus 06. Like... I would dare say Silver could rip a Star Destroyer out of orbit if he really wanted to. Um, <laughs> Provided Vader doesn't just straight up take the initiative and kill him, and Silver has time to realize he's got to get serious, I could see him eking out a win. Yeah, Silver just locks him down and screams, it's no use, and on repeat <laughs> at him for hours. <laughs> To which Vader just goes, no. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Here's a question from Gracie C. In IDW44, I know Starline had the Matrix of Leadership in his hideout. Where or where and when did he get that? Did he use the warp <laughs> topaz to go to the Transformers dimension or something? <laughs> and that was a fun little Easter egg by Tracy Yardley. Yeah, I was say, that's just a cute little visual gag for, you know, it's a little... Little uh, little shout out and stuff for to another uh, IDW property. Unless that somehow gets turned into the impetus for a crossover, in which <laughs> case we had it planned all along. Sure, why not? <laughs> Ooh, I like it. I like that idea. <laughs> Hasbro, call Sega. It's not Sega. Call Hasbro. Do something. Somebody do something. <sighs> Do something, Ian. I don't know what, but do do something. I'll answer more questions. Oh. Okay. Here's one from Renaissance Girl. Can Whisper sing? Can she howl? Are there any... Also, are there any resources you would recommend for aspiring comic book artists? Uh, can she sing? No. She She's never been very good at it, and since her personality shift, she's very not inclined to do so. Uh, and Howl, I don't know if she could bring herself to make that much volume on purpose nowadays. Uh, art book or references for comic artists. I am not the best to ask this because I am a writer. My artistic skills are limited at best. And so I focused more on the writing side than the actual art but uh you know any general anatomy drawing figure drawing environmental drawing guides to help you be able to nail down your fundamentals so that you can draw just about anything on demand and can extrapolate from there are always good it's best to have those Again, fundamentals down pat. Now that that's just for the bare bones, but like storytelling in comics is its own discipline. Um, shoot, what is the name of that famous book by Scott? Somebody, I can't remember off the top of my head. Clonk, clonk, are you okay? What's going on yeah, over I'm, there? I'm grabbing the computer. I'm going to look this up. Okay, okay. Just, just like bang, clang, bang. Yeah, sorry. Um, Understanding Comics, is that a... Yes. Is that a book? By Scott McCloud. There we go. Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. Um, it's not like the singular resource, 
but it does explain the mentality behind it, their construction in a very accessible way. So that's a good place to start. Indeed. Sounds good. Cool. Here's this one from Piccanilly, Piccaniland. Uh, does the world of Sonic share the same universe as Looney Tunes and or Merry Melodies, considering all the talking animals? Uh, I wouldn't immediately think so, but the whole thing about tunes is they break the rules. So who knows if <laughs> Wile E. Coyote paints a hole on the ground and Roadrunner runs straight over it and he falls through it and winds up in Mr. Cave. I mean, they do that sort of thing. Every other animal, every other animal uh, character is in the same universe too, maybe? No, probably not. Probably not. Depends fun, on how fun to liberal you want to be with your multiverse. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is, is, is Mickey there? Like, are they inspired by Mickey to wear giant gloves? Is that the, is that the deal? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, I'm getting this one here from the chat that say that says Sonic did punch Mario into Minecraft. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Just very funny. And it did actually happen. Thanks, Smash Brothers. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. Here's this one from the acquainted guy. With the confirmation of Marine's water powers and the Encyclopedia. If she ever returns an IDW, could we expect to see her user powers at all, perhaps? Well, we've already established that it's not a direct confirmation, but anyway, go ahead. I mean, I'd like to explore that aspect and actually get an answer on it. So maybe. And here's one from Sonic Mania 2099. I can't believe I'm asking this since I really hate zombie outbreak stories, but were there any concepts for the Zeddy as Zombots? No. Uh, the Zeddy were specifically there to make a bad situation worse. And once we had reached that point, it was, you know, the end game. We are, you know, resolving it after this point. And Zombot Zeddy would just be. I don't know, kind of redundant at that point. I mean, you can imagine some of them were infected after they lost to the various heroes, but you know, a dedicated look at them was not anything that no, we never had that in the cards. No. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we got another one here. Oh, no, actually, hold on. Uh, I got a question here from no, just, just <laughs> no, apparently that's what they're called. They, that's their name. They're just no, <laughs> Uh, in Sonic Shuffle, was it Team's dream version of them, since in the ending everyone seemed to wake up after they left Imaginary World? A little. I'm, I don't know, exactly understand this question, but go ahead, Ian. I, I think what they're asking is, were the characters their dream selves, or was it the real them transported to Imaginary World? Mm -hmm. And I can't answer that with confidence, because I'd have to go back and re-research sonic shuffle again i think the implication of the opening movie is they're summoned to imaginary world kind of like how the kids are summoned into uh was it dreamland or dream world in nights uh i don't think it's dreamland but it could be because uh... that's kirby isn't it yeah Ay, too many fanciful fairylands but i i think it was them them but i'm not 100 percent sure on that yeah all right and here's a question from sahi is sbo actually fast in idw i was wondering because starline managed to escape the chaotics fairly easily in issue number 44 yeah he's quick but the tricor gives starline nigh upon sonic like speed and that's just enough to outpace SBO, especially since he got a head start. Yeah. SBO's a ninja. Of course he's fast. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of traditionally seen as a speed type. He's definitely yeah. fleet of foot, but he's not like that fast. Yeah. I think uh, also the dream world in Knights is Nightopia. 
I could be there we go. wrong on that. Well, that's that's the chat. Maybe the chat are, is wrong on that. Anyway. <laughs> well, the little cherubs are called Nitopians, ergo. Yeah. They're from Nitopia. It's a good point. It's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Here's a question from Kanoka Club. It's upon us now. The Chow in Space Holiday Special. And it would seem that Sonic and company are joining the cast. What's the plot and their involvement in it? Oh, my God. <laughs> There's a dream project. <laughs> who's who's getting who's getting the virtual reality lamp dance? <laughs> Who, who's doing that? <laughs> which which hairy beast is getting the <laughs> virtual reality <laughs> lamp dance? It, it, we're not doing one to one. This oh. is we try to we aspire you for mean, better. You mean we're we, not we learn from past mistakes you, and we grow. You mean we're not getting the uh, Mobian equivalent of B. Arthur to play a bartender? <laughs> Why not? Well, that we can do because it's B. Arthur. That's true. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> and it would be entertaining to see Big just walk in just as a cameo to warble like Chewbacca. Froggy, where are you? <laughs> but, uh, uh, the plot would be somebody is stealing all the Christmas presents from the Chow, and they're sad. And so Sonic is going to go and find out who's done it, and that leads him to various cameo appearances of all of his friends. And then Eggman is obviously the main suspect but he's too busy building robots to enjoy christmas let alone ruin it <laughs> and then it turns out it's just a very lonely dark chow who wants all the presents but he's got piles and piles of them and isn't any happier because the real meaning of christmas is to give rather than to receive and to be with friends and family and so they all include him and there's just this big happy hug fest at the end <laughs> And at the very last shot, he kicks Sonic in the shins. <laughs> of course. Of course. Nice. <laughs> and we have more Super Chats coming in. Thank you, guys. Here's one from Sega Genesis 1991. In Sonic and the Secret Rings, Sonic mentions hell. And in Shadow, the dams are never ending. The Shadow or any other characters in the universe no curse words worse than damn or hell. <laughs> 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 let's just say vanilla puts on a very calm persona in <laughs> uh oh <laughs> uh oh we do we do we ever see her when she's not around children so uh, mm -mm. maybe that's maybe that's something cream's politeness is a reflex now yeah yeah <laughs> she must offset mother on occasion wow <laughs> wow brutal perhaps not today but then again perhaps tomorrow <laughs> do as i say not as i do as mother says <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> wow it's so wow. much fun to corrupt the innocent i don't know ian i don't know <laughs> why do you do this why is this a thing that you do you sicko you're, I don't you're, know. You're I, sick. I'm a damaged individual. You were sick. Yep. You are sick. Yep. You're like that guy in the window who's sitting there laughing, laughing uh, evilly, and, you, and you're wearing a shirt that says sickos on it. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a question from PC the Unicorn, a super chat question specifically. Thank you again. What would Eggman think of the movie Wall-E? Um, he would be torn because the idea of a perfectly functioning, all automated society in space is right up his alley. But all this talk about individual perseverance and protecting nature and recultivating the planet is just, ah, gag me. <laughs> all right and we got one more super chat question here this one's from edward 9909 he says i'm sorry do you think my idea is good though <laughs> yeah buddy just go for it do your do your idea do it do your idea thank you very much for your support 
and just go whole hog on it. Go whole hedgehog on it, yes. Or any other sort of hog you like. Here's a question from the Uranium Skull. What if Eggman created Surge and Kit instead of Metal Sonic? How would he treat them compared to Starline? Oh, man. Um, I don't think Eggman would think to create Surge and Kit, at least not in the way that Starline did, and certainly not for the function. <laughs> but uh, he would arguably be the better of the two because at least he's more direct. Um, I, I don't want to spoil imposter syndrome. It's just Starline is a bad man. And you'll see what I mean as things wrap up. And then you might be going, yeah, Eggman might be the lesser of two evils here. <laughs> That's actually what I was just going to ask. It's like, uh Oh, Starline even worse than Eggman. Oh, <laughs> Oh, uh oh, SpaghettiOs. <sighs> I'm glad we got someone who's like really super evil. I'm ready. Here's one from Emerald Forgotten. With the importance of Kitten Surge being emphasized in the upcoming arc, wouldn't it have been more casual reader friendly to make imposter syndrome part of the main book? Um, hmm. Technically, I would say yes, but marketing and probably a variety of other reasons there are a lot of factors that and the amount of time we are spending in the miniseries to build up surge and kit i think would slow down the main book it would take too much attention away from sonic and the main cast and we could you know potentially abbreviate surgeon kid's story but then you're getting less out of it you dig me yeah so i think this is the best way to approach it but that's me hmm. all righty there's a question from geo would silver and omo chow make a compatible team yes <laughs> because omo chow would rattle off nonsense nonstop and silver would eat it up Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so much wisdom and you're just imparting it to me thank you so much I've always been looking for answers and you keep giving them whether I ask or not <laughs> you also managed to follow me wherever I go non-stop this is great <laughs> follow Please, me. you gotta meet this guy <laughs> following you non-stop and every time you run into him he starts spouting off just keeps going can't stop won't stop I guess I don't think I'd forget how to use my own psychokinesis, but at least Omocha's here to remind me. Yes. They're talking about pushing buttons, though. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Push buttons to do this? No, I just do it. I mean, what? <laughs> Here's a question from Snow Run to Pyro. Any thoughts on the Mega Man Battle Network and Star Force series? I'm curious if any element stands out to either of you as something that would be fun to use in a theoretical comic. Um... I am not super well versed in Battle Network. And ne I know ne next to nothing about Star Force. N yeah, neither am I on both counts, really. I know a but little bit I... about Battle Network. I do find it interesting, and I think it would be a, a cool spin off book. But mm -hmm. um, what I do know of Battle Network to me feels like how you do a reinvention of a franchise right. Like it's familiar, it hits upon a lot of the same tropes. It has familiar elements and themes, but it is its own thing mm -hmm. that is uniquely itself with a gameplay that's inspired by the source material, but still wholly its own element and really, really robust and not something that I can actually play too well because I am a simple man. I, I press buttons and things don't happen like I want them to. <laughs> um, I, I'm more of a turn-based strategy game myself because I can sit turn-based strategy game player myself. I am not the actual game. <laughs> well, Battle Network is a turn-based RPG, so based, yeah, card it's, based. It's kind, of, it's card based, but it's still active battle. Yeah, kind of. That that active part, I can't keep up with it. So, mm. 
Mm-hmm. But I I really appreciate it for what it is. And if, you know, the stars aligned and we got that as a book instead of re restarting Mega Man, I would be quite happy to dive into its lore and tackle it with the same gusto as OG Mega Man. Yeah. I think it'd be a lot of fun to have a uh, Battle Network book, but. Oh, well, what could have been and what maybe will be eventually. Toad is Forgotten has a question. He's not forgotten. I remember Toad. Why doesn't Shadow have friends? Is Team Dark and they were cool in Heroes in 06. I feel like if Shadow doesn't have friends, his character suffers as a whole. I agree. And as to why, that's just how Sega wants to play him at the moment. So one can hope that there will be a shift in thinking in sooner rather than later, hopefully. All right. Here's a question from Johan R. One of the mandates states that Sonic must win in the end. Does that mean Sonic can have a Pyrrhic victory where a heavy price had to be paid to win like Tommy's death? Yeah. Um, this is kind of like more of a general, like Eggman cannot win forever type of thing. Or, you can't have Sonic like perpetually lose and be a loser in all things. But it's like with, um, shoot, what was the anniversary issue? Was it 175 where Eggman just stomps all over him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that right there, that whole issue is all about Sonic losing. But the next issue, he rallies and saves the day, and we go from there. So, you know, you can have Sonic lose a fight in an issue, but he still has to bounce back from it. We can't have Sonic lose for good. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> that'd be a short run for the series. I'm reading Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, he's dead now. <laughs> that was fun. Sonic is dead forever. Now it's just his name on the book to get sales. <laughs> Actually, come to think of it, there was a. Uh... One issue I wrote where the note came back that Sonic is winning too easily. Let him, you know, struggle a bit more. And it's like, wookie. All right. And we got to hear one from, we got one here. Hear one. Yes, I can, I can say words. <laughs> the sentence. What is sentence? Sentence structure. No, no, not allowed. Here's one from Happy Times. With how she can be more aloof or short-tempered around Kit, is Surge's dynamic with him based on Fleetway's Sonic and Tails' dynamic? Huh. No, but I can see where you're coming from. Yeah. That makes sense. It's not, yeah, it's not a, not a uh, conscious influence, probably, but... Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I mean, it's what it is is it's a corruption of the Sonic and Tails dynamic. Right. Where, you know, Sonic can be a bit aloof and Tails can be a little clingy followy sometimes, but they are always there for each other. It's still a very healthy, mutually supportive relationship. Surge and Kid are not healthy at any level. (laughs) Well, that's not very nice to say. You don't know what their health is like. Yeah, I do. I wrote it. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you don't know what their like physical health is like. Are they are they like falling apart? Are they old? Are they already are they aging super fast? Oh, uh, well, you'll just have to read to find out. Oh, OK. OK. All right. Fine. Marketing. Jeez. <laughs> Here's a question from Elijah M. Would you ever be willing to do an adaptation of Sonic Battle since Gemeral is part of the cast? Yeah, I mean. My pie in the sky, please, oh gods, hear my prayer. What animal do I have to sacrifice to you? Is just to do a full library of standalone graphic novel adaptations of the modern series. Adventure to forces. Just make a nice clean take on the whole modern storyline. And that's probably never going to happen, but. I would love to do that. And battle would most definitely be included in there. Yeah. Battle's neat. I feel like it's kind of overlooked, but it's a pretty neat game. 
It I, fits. I, I like it. Absolutely gorgeous sprite work. Yeah, definitely. Here's one from Levi C. At the beginning of Sonic Unleashed, Sonic has the seven Chaos Emeralds. How did he get them? Did he keep them from a previous game, or was there an off-screen adventure? I think the intro pretty much implies that we've missed out on some whole other adventure. Because we've already got the Eggman fleet in space. We've already got Sonic with the Chaos Emeralds. It feels like, you know, this you're, we're, you're watching the end cinematic from a game you didn't get to play. Yeah, Sonic and... Adventure 3. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's what it is. Oh, man. Oh, man. Huh. <coughs> sorry, sorry, Sonic Adventure 3 uh, hopefuls. But, yeah, I think that's all you're going to get. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you got anything else to add on that or did I cut you off? <laughs> was that too harsh? There's nothing you can follow up with that. That was too harsh. Yeah. Brutal. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, it's not my fault. Go yell at Sega. Yes, I will pass the buck on to Sega. I will not accept responsibility for that one. All right, here's one from Levi C. At the beginning of Sonic Unleashed, Sonic has this... Oh, nope, sorry, we just did that. Sorry. Uh, blah, 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 blah. All right. <laughs> uh, here's one from Chachira Tenbi Lupe. Uh, will we be seeing more rough and tumble shenanigans soon? Yes. Okie dokie. Good. I'm glad. And we got more Super Chats coming in. Thank you, thank you. Another one from Sega Genesis 1991. Honey is suddenly hosting a spitting tournament to further her brand. Which Sonic character can hawk a loogie the farthest? <laughs> I'd say Sonic See? because he has a spin dash to give him a little extra momentum. <laughs> he is his own trebuchet. Oh, that's vile. <laughs> but let's not discount Vector, who has a whole repertoire of spitting techniques. So I would believe he is a contender. Uh, Eggman would try just to show up Sonic because that's what he do. Um, Rough and Tumble would be frighteningly adept. I really don't like where any of this is going. <laughs> I like it. I think it's very funny. Uh, but the <laughs> but the black horse in the race, I don't know where. Here comes Chaos, who just launches his whole head across the arena. <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> you gonna argue with him? Well, what, what, which Chaos is it? Are we talking well, Chaos zero. zero or seven? Zero, yeah. Zero? Yeah, screw that guy, whatever. <laughs> You play a dangerous game, sir. Big drip. <laughs> <laughs> He's got no drip. Thinks he does, but he doesn't. Man. <laughs> Kyle with all the hot takes. Mm. Nah, not really. I do have this one here, for uh, this uh, question here from Gyroder, though, with a very generous donation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Say, hello, how did Silver pull the metal virus off everyone? My understanding was that the virus converts people, sort of like roboticization. I apologize if I'm remembering or if I sound bellicose. It's, we, we purposefully did not go too in-depth how the metal virus works because I didn't want to be beholden to a degree of super science that, or comic book science, that, you know, would undermine us in the long run, but basically it does infest the body and convert to a degree. So what super silver did was basically pull the metal virus out along with reversing that conversion. Uh, someone in the chat is asking, I'm just putting this one out there real quick. If issue 50 is going to be the last issue of Sonic, uh, no, I'm like 99% sure the answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> So, yes. It better not be. Evan and I have planned a whole lot after that. <laughs> I mean, you haven't heard if it is, so... Hmm. 
Hopefully. Hopefully it is not. <laughs> Evan and I have planned a lot after that, so no. <laughs> All righty then. Well, just to clarify that, clear that message clear that message up. Here's a question from Bony Cheese. Kit the capybara with a Glock and mimic switch roles. What happens? I'm sorry. Kit the capybara with a Glock? <laughs> I don't know why it says with a Glock. <laughs> I don't and, know. And mimic switch roles. So mimic is now a driving instructor. Yes. <laughs> And the copybearer is now an infiltrator and assassin. I mean, okay. do you want to mess with the capybara? I don't. I mean, not if he's packing. I, that... <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to mess with him in general, but especially not if he's packing. <laughs> I mean, he's so mild mannered. Maybe that's how he works. You know, you don't see him coming because it's like, oh, there's a capybara. He's chill. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> pack, 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 and you're gone. You're gone. You don't even see it coming. Yeah. Nobody suspects him because he just walks away super casually. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Mimic is the worst driving instructor because he's hostile from the get go. <laughs> and he will reach out with a tentacle to grab the steering wheel from you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. And he will mash the uh, instructor brake just to mess with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're trying to start the car and he's just got his foot on it. Mm -hmm, yeah. Go through the 12 step process of checking to see what's wrong with the car <laughs> jerk you can't figure it out then clearly you failed pretty much <laughs> here's a question from jensie rose was it supposed to be implied that tempo had a crush on blues i noticed her blush around him in a few panels it may be a silly question but i was just wondering yeah we were kind of lightly toying with that having some fun with it but we weren't too committed with it from what i remember all right, here's one from Off. Maybe a question for Evan, but Ian will have to do for now. Yeah, you'll suffice, Ian, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I am discount, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> Surgeon Kit, androids or organic? Some kind of cybernetic mix of the two? You're just going to have to read imposter syndrome to find out. Bum, bum, bum. That It will be answered, though. That's not me just being cheeky. It's like there are a lot of answers in that many. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry you guys have to keep reading the story to figure out the answers to your questions. I mean, gosh. Here's one from Wolfsbane. Could we get Evan on after imposter syndrome is finished? Well, I mean, Evan's writing the main series right now. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, it's he means alternating like, main book, mini, main book, main, uh, mini. I think he. So every other month you're getting Evan on the show. Ah! Uh, Oh. On the Bumblecast, yes. Uh, we've had her ah. on before. We had her on when she was, before she started her run, actually. Yeah. And uh, I think it's been, like. yeah, I think it's been quite a, it's been quite a while since she's been on last. So, uh, sure, we could try and see if we can get her on again and answer some questions. Because you guys have had a lot directed to her. So, yeah, maybe. Give her, give her, give her a ping at some point, maybe. Here's this one from Greg Craig T. Is Sonic connected to Marvel and DC? Uh, we pretty much already answered this. Yeah, we did that one. Yeah, it's a different person, but oh, and well, the answer, but it's the same. Is no. But it's the same question. Yeah, this one from Abdi M. Hey Ian and Kyle, Doctor Eggman is actually a hairless baboon Mobian. Can confirm? <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. Why not? Uh, I mean, he's not totally here. Let's look at that mustache. Mm hmm. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, you can't really counter argue it too hard. Who are we to uh, tell you what you can or cannot head cannon? <laughs> uh, all right. All right. All right. We got uh, more super chats coming in and you guys, you guys are awesome. Here's PC the Unicorn with a question. Team dynamic of sticks, honey, and bunny? Hmm. Um, I think bunny would have to 
de- become the de facto leader of the group. She would have to, to try sense. and try and keep the other two kind of from going off the rails, especially Sticks. But you know, yeah, honey, honey, I mean, honey's still a little rambunctious. Yeah, honey would be at least reasonable, but she would get distracted every now and again. And Bunny's just awesome enough to be a solid core to the group. Sticks, I think, would have this running thing of distrusting uh, how things are. I mean, it's right there in front of you. and Nobody's asking the questions. Why does this cat have wings? Oh, yeah, that robot, that rabbit is half robot. That's fine. But why does a cat have wings? And she's got some kind of sphinx. Is she a walking riddle? What is going on with honey? <laughs> Something is weird. Something is going on. Very strange. Anyway, we got a question. Another super chat question here from Sega Genesis 1991. So there's Mobian animals and regular animals and little animals like in Sonic Adventure 2. Which ones get eaten and which ones have sentience? What goes on the <laughs> dog, man? Ah. Uh... I don't know, man. Mm. I don't know. I mean, the little animals seem to be fairly self-aware. A little bit of a little bit of flicky meat in that chili. Mm. <laughs> Kentucky Fried Flicky. Mm, yummy, yummy. Where's Kentucky in Sonic's world? <laughs> I don't know. Somewhere within the Grand United Federation. Uh, I mean, and what what counts as sapience amongst real animals today that's a hot button topic so uh, tell you what let's figure out how they buy the food first and then we'll figure what what's in the food deflection hmm. 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 here's a question from super austin if you got to make anti-mobius versions of the zeti what would you make them like would they be the uh, the A Eddie? Because it would start with A instead of Z. Well, no, that's that's the no zone. That's Zonic and all of them. He's asking Anti Mobius. You're the no zone. <laughs> I think we've we've um, done this one. That we like they were like super super environmentalists and yeah, that's sounding familiar. Yeah. Um. Maybe soften the Z's into an SH. So you have Shavok, mm-hmm. uh, okay. Sheena, and Shore, and just one big hippie circle. <laughs> we're just cool, man. We're just trying to. We're just trying to save the planet, man. I mean, the one thing that's consistent is that Shavok hates waste, but he's like, it's such a bummer, man. There's like. <laughs> all this stuff in creation that we could all share. I just hate waste, you know? <laughs> hippie surfer, <Instead> of- <laughs> hippie surfer, Zavok, I guess. <laughs> Instead of drinking in the energy of the planet, they try to give their own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're all just hugging the ground. <laughs> Take our lay force. <laughs> <Live. laughs> we give back to the great mother Gaia. <laughs> And now you're sounding like uh, <laughs> Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Macho Heal Man. Heal the world, brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Here's one from Rosie Mix. I love that idea of the Knuckles and Tikal swapping eras thing. So my question is, how would Tikal's relationship and interactions with the modern cast be like in this scenario? Hmm. Um, I would imagine fairly pleasant. I mean, they're all very good, supportive people. And she would be less inclined to jump to conclusions and punch somebody, so she'd be rather welcome amongst them all. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Here's one from Aaron M. In a past Q&A, when you answered my question about making my own non-profit Sonic comic, you mentioned about merch and having to talk about licensing. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, selling selling stuff. That's the that's the question, apparently. Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, selling stuff, you would have to license it if it's based on not your own thing, so. 
Now, like, Probably. do not take do not take this as sound legal advice because I am not a lawyer and I could be very, very wrong. Yeah. But if you had your fan comic out there and you made merch of the holy fan made characters. I think that would be OK. Yeah, I think that would be fine. I, I mean, mean, as even, long as you're not like even, as long as you're not like full on copying the Uikawa style. I think you'd be all right. Even fan art of characters is okay. I mean, Artist Alley, they at con- conventions, they sell prints of Sonic and characters like that. So it's a, that it's, it's sort of is... a, it's a, it's a definitely a weird gray area and a line that I think most companies kind of look away from that unless you're like making a ton of money over it. But yeah, because yeah. I, I think the, the, the artist alley type stuff is technically infringement. But it is, yes, but the amount of money and effort needed to track all of that down and prosecute would be and self destructive. And so. and it would also be it would just be a like a PR nightmare. Oh yeah, like a like so, a, a company just going after fans for fan work would be. Ooh, yeah. I, and you know, it really also depends on the company. Like Sega is extremely cool about fan games and stuff in general. Yeah. Which is a bit of a blessing. And then you have Nintendo, which is absolutely draconian. They will stomp out anything at the slightest, slightest whiff of infringement. So I uh, just, just tread lightly, you know? Yeah. It's weird though. Cause I mean, Nintendo does stomp out a lot of stuff, but they, don't necessarily stomp out everything like there's the um the the flash version of super smash brothers that was around that's been around for like decade decade and a half at this point Mm -hmm. um that has been fine apparently it's managed to at least skirt under the radar um yeah i don't i don't know it gets kind of weird um it seems like Things that get more attention, especially these days, are more on Nintendo's radar. So, the uh, Flash Smash Brothers was, like, you know, a decade and a half ago. So, it's pretty old at this point. It's probably just kind of going under the radar. All right, here's one. Here's another super chat from PC the Unicorn. How would Whisper versus Eclipse play out? <laughs> um, you remember that statement about nothing standing in a one kilometer radius? Um, that wouldn't apply here because this would be a much more concise, brutal fight. This would be a bug hunt when you get down to it. You've got Eclipse being all sneaky, slithery and whatever derelict spaceship he's on. And Whisper, who knows very well that this is a deadly alien dude who wants to eat everyone's faces and needs to be exterminated. Um, cycling through various Wispons, Wispon settings to take on the various dark arms abilities. That would be hella cool, dude. This, would be, this is awesome. This sounds like a freaking like alien franchise yeah. movie, but with Sonic. <laughs> You know, anybody out there who just wants like animate something like a 10 minute fight movie just for funsies, let me know. I'll write up a script. (laughs) I can't license or pay anything, but by God, it'll be nice looking because you did all the work. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, very nice. And we have a very generous donation here from Wolfsbane. Ooh, thank you. As much as I enjoyed the new characters like Tangle, Whisper, Starline, etc., there's still room for them to grow as characters. How do you balance development out with a monthly comic? Um, part of it is you don't necessarily have to be in a rush because this is a licensed book and the main cast themselves are not going to really develop or change anytime soon. So we have the time to explore these other characters at our leisure. Um, 
the other thing is you don't want them to overpower the narrative. It's fun to investigate certain niches that are not covered by the game cast, but people are coming to Sonic for Sonic first and foremost. So you need to give them a rest every now and again so you can focus on the main characters that most people are here to read about. Uh, there is no like perfectly defined way to do it. This is kind of like feel it out, I guess, as much as it is structural, but I don't know. It's kind of looking at you know, what, what are their goals at the time being? Where do we want to take them and how quickly does that need to happen? Like Starline being booted from Eggman and with his clear aspirations to do more, that iron has to be struck while it's hot. That has to be followed up on because if you let it linger too long, then you lose what, what he's doing. You lose the threat of a sidekick spurned. Whereas Tangle and Whisper have already reached a kind of stability in the relationship. Although Evan is playing with that now, they had reached a certain degree of stability where you didn't necessarily need to follow up on it immediately. You knew where they were, you knew who, who they were, and then when there's a new direction to take them, you can pick up and go. If that makes any sense. Sure. Here's a question from Commander Cody. From what we know of Surgeon Kit, how would Surgeon Kit be like in Moebius? You know, the, the evil Moebius? The alternate Maybe Sonic universe. and Tails. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe Surge would not be the most delicate in her wording, but she would be the hero the world deserves. Neither is Sonic, to be fair. Yeah. I, I feel like she's still better be now, nice, but, but yeah. he's better now, but he used to kind of, he used to have some, he used to have more tood. And, you know, her relationship with Kit would be one of mutual trust and support instead of <laughs> what we have. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And a question from Grim Drago. Do you think Sonic ever just slams into walls trying to see if there's a breakable pathway? <laughs> <laughs> Does Ian well, try and is... randomly punch walls to punch through them and see if it's breakable? <laughs> Maybe he should. I mean, he's always knocking down doors, never following. Uh -huh, so... It's true. It's true. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's got like a sixth sense, so he just doesn't turn himself into wall pizza. Mm. Can I make it? Can I? Can I make it? Can I make it? No, maybe not. Mm, wall pizza. It's like wall chicken, except it's pizza. <laughs> Here's one from Sega Genesis 1991. Another super chat. Wow, <laughs> you're very generous. Hey, keep it coming. <laughs> uh, my mom can beat up your mom. It's a battle of the moms. Who would win in a fist fight? Fist fight. Chris, Chris Thorndike's mom versus Vanilla versus Mother Wisp versus Queen Alina versus all Archie Sonic moms. Who is top mom? <laughs> <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna discount Mother Wisp because I think one tentacle could flatten all the others in a single blow. <laughs> yeah, I, I, didn't we say so? Didn't you like headcanon something about Vanilla having being former uh, military? Or something. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. She would um, definitely be a contender. <laughs> what about Mama Robotnik? <laughs> ah. Ah. Ooh. Dislike. Everyone didn't like that. Thumbs no, down. no, no. I know no. someone liked it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna count Mama Robotnik because she's a force of nature by herself. <laughs> I mean, Mom bought out of the Sonic Boom has nothing on Mama Robotnik. No, 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 no. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. John Gray has entered the chat. <laughs> <laughs> not really. I don't think. I don't think he's here. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but he should geez. be. <laughs> And all the other moms. Mm -hmm. I mean, Chris's mom is an actress and she was driving a motorcycle, doing her own stunts in that one episode. So she's clearly got some physical prowess. Uh, Cream, I imagine had to have learned her moves from somewhere. And since her dad is absent, I'm just going to default to assume it's vanilla. 
and uh, we didn't really see a lot of what Jules could do back in the day, so maybe Sonic got some of his chutzpah from his mom. Let's just say the three of them team up and beat up everybody else. <laughs> nice. There's one from Michael B. Had they not been replaced by Bo and Thorn, would Rob and Mary Ann's role been the same in Chaotix Quest? More or less. Um, I feel like Rob, excuse me, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I feel like Bo was a little more animated than Rob. And I guess Mary and Thorn were about the same. So it would have been roughly the same, I guess. But I I think I, ah, that's been so long. I don't know if I wanted to go that route with Rob anyway, just to have some fun with him. Or if Bo was like an opportunity to just have fun since we weren't beholden to what came before. I don't know. It wouldn't have drastically changed things, at least. (laughs) Here's one from Pizza Imperial. Ian, do you think Sony Sonia is a spoiled brat, or is she just misunderstood by her two brothers? A little of column A, a little of column B. I mean, she was raised with a silver spoon in her mouth. She is used to a higher standard of living yeah. than the other two. But she's sticking with the t- other two. She's traveling. She's, you know living with the pores of her own volition. So she's clearly devoted to the cause. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here's a question from Nico C. What is your favorite story arc and Archie exclusive character prior to your run as head writer? Uh, Pretty much anything that had interjack in it. Like, the initial Knuckles mini where Mm -hmm. he kidnaps the chaotix and he's this ancient evil popping out from a skull shaped mountain building dark cities from his very will. And knuckles has to figure out how to handle that. That's just cool. Yeah. That first mini was pretty, pretty cool. Um, and those spaz covers. Oh my mm, God. Oh yeah. Yes. Very much so. And then what uh, was it called? Dark Alliance when mm-hmm. he escapes and takes over the dark legion, you know, here we are. We worship the effigy of Enerjack. Sup bitches. I'm ruling now. Oh, <laughs> let's go invade Echidnopolis let's just straight up nuke Knuckles dissolve him with a thought oh that was that was freaking cool Jeez. that was that was my jam yeah yeah those were good those were good we always talk about uh we always bring it up but Mecha Madness too was also a, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. a just a just a tour de force of art and writing just so much fun here pat you just go nuts buddy pretty it's much like, yeah yeah oh, that two-page spread oh god mecha sonic unloads a, on mecha knuckles it's, oh. it's a beautiful it's a beautiful book oh man it's so good <laughs> always always gotta give props to that one for sure good one great one all right we got more super chats coming in wow man you guys, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Here's one from our buddy, Ink Pants. If Sega released toy figures of each of you, what would your toy gimmick be? <laughs> um, Mine would I be... guess if you make my figure straighten up, you can hear the spine crack into place. <laughs> Mine would be restless leg syndrome action. <laughs> You stop pressing the button, but the leg seat keeps kicking. Yep, pretty much. Yeah, that's what happens. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. In case you guys are wondering, it's true. <laughs> uh, and it's been getting worse. Anyway, <laughs> Hero of Light 13 has a question. You've said before, you had canon that the Time Eater is a remnant of Solaris slash Mephilus. But I'll do you one better. Could the Phantom Ruby be a remnant of the Time Eater? No, I don't think so, because the Phantom Ruby's whole thing is creating virtual constructs. It creates illusions, and Time Eater is messing with time. Nom like, nom. They're, they're very different power sets. <laughs> and our f- last uh, 
Super chat question for now is from Edward9909. If you could use Manic, how would you? Um, I wouldn't mind seeing Manic and Sonya again in a new context. Yeah. The tricky thing with them is I know for a fact we wouldn't be able to make Sonic long lost royalty. Yeah. But part of their dynamic is that sibling bond. So maybe, and this is just me spitballing, uh, have Sonya and Manic a pair traveling to reunite their family that has been separated. And they get along great with Sonic. They have this really cool three-way dynamic and they just mesh and, huh, isn't that funny? Well, I hope you find your long lost brother, guys. I'm off to go get a chili dog with tails and, you know, just dance around the idea a little bit. Yeah. Um, you also have the matter of you know restoring their mother to the throne, which I guess you could keep, but it can't really be quite the same since Eggman doesn't rule any one specific area, let alone the planet anymore. So she'd have to go missing for some reason and their travel. I don't know. It becomes a question of how much can you hold on to and then how cumbersome does it become after that? But I don't know. I wouldn't be opposed to them coming back as kind of the occasional guest character. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> that is not up to me, sadly. And we got about 15 minutes left, guys. So thank you very much. Um, if you want to keep sending us super chats, go ahead. We're not going to say no. We're not going to stop you. But uh, we are going to be winding down here pretty soon. So. Here's a question from Raphael C. Do you know if the Phantom Ruby Ruby that appeared in Sonic Mania and Mania Plus is the real Phantom Ruby or one of the prototypes from Forces? I am assuming it's the real one because it originates in Mania and then somehow appears in uh, the classic era, not the classic, stupid, the modern era. And Eggman finds it outside his base and then bases the prototypes off of that. From my understanding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here's a question from Kai. I'm not 100% sure how this is pronounced, so I apologize. Uh, Kai, Kai Q, I think. I'm not sure. Kai Q F. I, I apologize if uh, that's not correct. But the question is what if Xena defeated Sonic during Sonic Lost World? Well, it'd be a very short game. Yeah. <laughs> then the Zeddy would continue to siphon the life force out of the planet. They would become incredibly powerful and everyone would die. Delicious. Delicious, delicious planet juice. Here's one from Hyper Mataru. If Sonic OVA wasn't off limits, which of course it is for obvious reasons, how would you include characters like Sarah, the president, and the old owl man in the canon? Um, have <laughs> the old owl man is Night the Owl's dad. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, the fan idea, like... but you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine the president and Sarah are of just a nation somewhere within the United Federation. You know, that doesn't necessarily have to be the land of the sky, it can be, you know, Freedomopolis freedom town whatever you want to call it and he's president of that region and she's still his daughter and is she like a cat girl or is it a costume i don't know but yeah old man owl just kind of pops up at the most random of times big the cat style to be old and hilarious <laughs> Nice. You know, Sonic's about to run out the door to stop Eggman and runs into Old Man Owl. Oh, hello there, Sonic. I was looking for my pudding. Old Man Owl, what the hell are you talking about? I got to go save the day. All right, let's go together. We can take my plane. That That's a Vespa. You can't fly a Vespa. Then how did I get here? I honestly don't know. Just move, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> 
Here's one from Golden Dawn. Are there any chances for a Sonic Prime IDW comic tie-in? Also, do you know anything if Sonic Prime is canon for games? And please don't tell me everything is canon. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really speak much about it. Um, if there was going to be a comic tie-in, that would be up to all the people way above me to figure out Wild Brain and Man of Action and Sega and IDW. And uh, if they've got that in the works, I don't know about it. All right, here's one from Frank7640. Will we ever get a chance to see Surge interact with Shadow, and what do they think of each other? I imagine their interaction to be very interesting and or funny. Well, considering they've only appeared, like, twice so far, I think we have plenty of time to <laughs> investigate that. <laughs> oh, boy. That could be a very, very interesting, uh, interesting meeting. And here's one from Kitar Kitar Station. Hey, Ian, I have a controversial question. Do you think that bringing Sally in IDW would make some fans mad because she wouldn't be allowed to be Sonic's girlfriend? The answer is oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's obvious. <laughs> the Freedom Fighters are preloaded with controversy. Oh, like, boy. You have no idea. There'd be folks mad that they were included at all. There would be folks mad that they didn't come back in the way that they wanted. Uh, there, There's 101 ways where people would be dissatisfied, and you can't help that. So if Sally and or the FF come back, it's going to have to be in whatever circumstances are we can work under, and we'll do the best that we can with them, presuming that I'm still on the book at that point. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the vast majority of people would just be happy to see them get another lease on life. And, you know, as long as they're treated with respect, they're like, cool, we got them back. And that's fine by me. Yeah, you can't you can't please everyone. <laughs> All right. And we have another super chat here. This one is from Super Ali 9000. Thank you very much. Uh, what do you think of the concept of fusions such as Shadow slash Sonic? Shadik. I'm kind of surprised it hasn't happened already, given how many Dragon Ball isms are in Sonic. Yeah. And I feel like that fusion in particular would just mint money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I think the general fandom would eat it up. So... Mm-hmm. I'm almost inclined to say it's a matter of time. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I, I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised it hasn't happened. It's true. And we got a question here from Dadler the Dalek. Hey, Ian and Kyle, how would you both imagine a crossover between Sonic and Rescue Rangers? Hmm. It would work. I think you can make it definitely make it work. Um, the tricky thing is, uh, I mean, just ha have Sonic helping him solve a mystery seems like the thing, but yeah, the thing is, it'd be weird because the Rangers are all like real life animal sized and Sonic is not true. Yeah. So, but then again, I guess it'd be just like him interacting with the small animals, except these can talk. Right. Yeah. It wouldn't be too different. Yeah. There's, there's precedent for it. Sure. Yeah. All right. All right. So yeah, like you said, they they'd solve some kind of mystery together and oh shoot what was the name of that dumpy little mad scientist that they foiled repeatedly oh man i forgot oh i haven't seen rescue rangers in forever yeah but you know who i mean he teams up with dr eggman they do something to like brainwash and kidnap all the animals right to stuff them into bad nicks sonic and the rangers team up <laughs> yeah that yeah, 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 yeah. Super easy. <laughs> Maybe that's what Sonic Rangers actually is, was supposed to be. <laughs> maybe. Just maybe. <laughs> and we got another super chat here from PC the Unicorn. Thank you, buddy. Uh, what would Styx think of the Wisps? They're She'd aliens, be vindicated. Man. Aliens are real. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. She would... She would she would like it. And then they would uh they would be nice to her, but she would try and swat them away. No, leave me alone. <laughs> Get away. 
<laughs> but then she would uh, eventually have one as a pet. Because, of course, she would. <laughs> uh, here's one from Hero of Light 13. Another super chat. Will Surge and Kit get to stay villains, or is there a potential redemption path? I'm personally rooting for permanent bad guys. I uh, I don't want to pigeonhole them since they've just debuted. But my intention for the immediate future is villains. We have a lot of antagonist turned frenemy in this series. Let's have some villains. Mm. You know? Villains. I'm ready for them. Ready for some villains. Ready for some villainy. Some straight up villainy. And we got one more super chat from Sega Genesis 1991. So the president has a photo of Sonic and Shadow on his desk. Obviously, he's a big fan. Do you think he has a secret room in the White House full of Sonic figures? What secrets is the government hiding? <laughs> Speaking of sticks. <laughs> you beat me to the joke. Um, does he have his own secret, like, cache of Sonic memorabilia? Um, hard to say the president, what little we get of him seems to be kind of rigid, but also kind of a doofus. So yeah, maybe. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, hold on a second here, guys. I think I am figuring out something here. There was somebody in here. There we go. Okay, I need to look something up. Um, all right, okay. Um, somebody in the question, somebody in the chat was asking if we were never going to, if we were ever going to get their question. And I just checked and we've answered it. So, um, ba -da -ba -da -ba. yeah, we already answered that toward the beginning of the show, as far as I can tell. So, um, yeah let's see I think yeah maybe it was about mephilus or no not mephilus Inf infinite whatever the same freaking character <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know I'm, I'm just being a troll on that guys it's <laughs> oh. All right, here's a question from James R. <laughs> Eggman's robots EMP proof. If not, why has Tails not used any? Um, no, they're not EMP proof because the Deadly Six can take them over with their EMP powers. And he hasn't done it because it's cost prohibitive. This is too easy. Because it's cost. You know, he's, he's really Ian. concerned about cost Ian. with all those mass produced robots. Ian, cost prohibitive. You see what you're saying? There's oh, no money right. in Sonic's world. Right. We can't right. have it. Nope, nope. There's no cost. There's no sunk cost fallacy. That's not a thing. <laughs> no, no, no money changes hands ever. Why do the Chaotix get work? So they can pay their rent. How do they pay their rent? With money. But there is no money. Which would explain why they can't pay their rent. <laughs> we need no money. <laughs> All right, here's one from B17567. Hi, Ian. This has been on my head for a few days, but is Shade the Echidna, Echidna and the Nocturnus owned by Sega? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. This is surprisingly on point. I mean, <laughs> I'm ass I'm assuming so. And there's not like a co-ownership of Bioware, but well, yeah, that's true. I mean, Bioware made the game for Sega, so I'm assuming co it's it would be Electronic Arts. So, yeah, the yeah. parent company would own that. So, yes. And here's one from S Shining. How old is Sonic and Classic Sonic in the game story? They're both 15. 
<laughs> how is how is cl- would classic Sonic be considered modern Sonic's past? Uh, don't think about it. <laughs> don't wonder. Years are extremely long in Sonic's world. That might explain it. That might explain the weird age thing too. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe the years are just like incredibly long. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a worm from Digimon Kaiser 411. Have you tried pitching any of the Koro Koro comic characters for art for IDW? Nikki, Anton, Veruca, Omelets, etc. Given that Amy and Charmy originated from them, they might be available. I haven't, but I wanna. I would love to revamp them to something into the modern standard. Or, you know, maybe even pitch them into the classic. Expand that universe a little bit. But I have not had the opportunity to, and I am 99% sure that would get a big fat no. Yep. Here's a question from that one guy. Since you're not allowed to use any kind of currency, for now at least, what do mercenaries like Mimic, Skunk Bro- the Skunk Brothers, the Diamond Cutters, and Jackal Squad get rewarded with? treasure monopoly money <laughs> except no there there's not even monopoly money there can't even be fake money in sonic's world there's just no money at all weird weird rings yes it's rings ignore that we have not seen rings in idw the the yeah don't yeah <laughs> ah. ian why are things like this? <sighs> We're at the two hour mark, by the way. Do we want to keep going? We're almost toward the end. Let's, of let's the... make it. A, let's round it out to eight three. Let's do another ten. Honestly, we are toward the end of getting at least one question from everyone who's asked one before we cut things off. So let's uh, do it. We can we can get to we can get through these. So and here's one from Jasse B. Is it true that Tails and Eggman are the only characters allowed by Sega to get involved with mad science? If so, what does this mean for Dr. Starline and Wave the Swallow? I feel like there was a note like that on something at some point, but we haven't run into it since. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Hmm. And here's a question from Scarlet Chan. If Mephilus accidentally stole Rouge's shadow when he was released from the scepter, would he still have his epic Dan Green voice? Would he still have his own <laughs> powers? I hope so. <laughs> Just imagine this horrible, like, crusty shadow puppet version of Rouge, but still with the deep Dan Green voice. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm here for it. Maybe it's like a layered voice. You have Dan Green's voice and then Rouge's voice too. No, 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 no. Just Dan Green. Oh, okay, okay. Just Dan Green. Okay. With those wings, he'd arguably look cooler. Oh, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> oh, man. Like some kind of be, horrible gargoyle. You could do, re- do, re- do some really cool things with those wings, man. You could make them like a super huge. Oh, man. Uh, fan artists, I think you know what you need to do. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you want. Here's one from Solaris S. Can you explain the magic system of Sonic's world? Would you say it's soft or hard? (laughs) Soft. (laughs) Very, very soft to the point where magic doesn't exist in Sonic. Like melted, like melted butter. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's more science fantasy than fantasy magic. Yeah, it's it's high tech stuff. But how does it work? Mm, 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 mm. All right, and we got a question here from another one from Edward9909. Did you enjoy writing the Sonic Boom comic? This is a super chat, by the way, so thank you. Yeah, I freaking loved it. It was such a fun book. I can tell you had fun writing it while reading it because it's a it's a riot. I love it. All right, here's one from Jacob Y. Do you have any particular voices you hear for any of the IDW exclusive characters? Um, 
kind of inflections, but not necessarily voices. I've lapsed into Starline myself when doing shows. <laughs> um, how cringe is that? But um, like decided voices, not too much. Like I kind of have an idea of how rough and tumble would sound, but it's not like I have a dedicated voice or a voice cast in my head. Right. We've been, we've talked about this a couple times at least. So, but yeah, it's fan, fan casting. I think you guys, you guys have got that one down. You guys have it. Here's one from Waku Waku Patrol. Is there a version of big in the world of the Arabian Nights or Black Knight or just one big thought through all the universes? Or one I big, imagine. One big throughout all the universes, I think they meant to say. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, 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 can you tell we've hit the two hour mark? <laughs> uh, I imagine there is just one singular big across the multiverse. Of course there is. Big as love, big as life. <laughs> big is a singularity across all the permutations of big, reality. Big is the watcher. I mean, that's what he was doing in <laughs> Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> Who else would he be? Or maybe he's the G-Man from Half-Life. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, big talking with the G-Man speech patterns. That sounds frightening. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise <laughs> and shine. <laughs> the right man in the wrong please can make all the difference. <laughs> oh, this is Wake up and smell the ashes, Mr. Freeman. <laughs> this is terrible. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Alright, here's one from Speed Tunes. What inspired you inspired you to create the Tricor? And why did you pick Starline specifically? Uh, Tricor because, uh, well, it was, it's kind of the chicken and the egg thing almost, but with Starline, his whole f gimmick is he has almost this meta contextual understanding of the world he's in. And if he is going to compete with these inherent tropes of the heroes that he's encountering, he needs a way to combat them. And he would not be content with just a singular answer. You know, to be on par with Sonic is fine, but that still leaves him open to anything else. Like Sonic is not the end all be all power set. So the Tricor was his answer to that. How do I counter most of the abilities found with Sonic and his friends? And then the question is, how do you create such a device as a narrative construct and not make it incredibly freaking broken? Which is why it only, you know, can only one trait can be activated at a time, which makes it more interesting to be used because Starline just can't power his way through everything. And giving it a limited charge means that he can't just do it all the time. He does have a limit to how far he can go with this. So it enables someone who is outside of the normal heroics of the game, keep pace with these incredibly powerful characters in a way that makes sense without making him my perfect baby OC who can beat up Sonic, you know? <laughs> right. Here's a question from L. Frostyzoid. Anything moving through space is necessarily doing so through time. Velocity, of course, may cause differences between the inertial frames of reference, but overall, this stays true. This is not a question, but I'm guessing they're talking about the space-time yeah, 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 yeah. from that, earlier. That sounds smart enough that I'm just going to smile and nod and say, yep. You oh, got it right. Okie dokie. And we got one here from Superstar Alien 169. What's the deal with the new or previously do or previously dubious information in the encyclopedia, such as the new name for the Badniks and Marines powers? Is everything in the book okayed by Sega? Oh yes. Everything was scrutinized by Sega. Big shout out to Mike and Mia who you know, ran interference on that and helped fact check and all the notes that came back from Sega of America and Sega of Japan. Um, there are some stories I want to tell about the inf some of the information in there, but it's too early to do so to pull back that curtain. Nothing scandalous, just fun insider stuff that I would love to geek out about, but I can't for professional reasons just now. 
but this is the encyclopedia consider that the most up to date version of this information. Um, because I, I know a lot of Sonic stuff off the top of my head, but I did a lot of research and all of that was double checked and in some cases corrected. So that's what the encyclopedia is. Yes. Sega did in fact read it. In yeah. Case, in case you're wondering. Here's one from Tony C. Over the course of a decade and a half, you have written in many a Sonic characters. Do you regret not having written one of them, like Ed, Eggman Nega, Elise, or Eraser Jin? Uh, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. <laughs> like, there's nobody that immediately springs to mind, like, ah, curse you, face, you denied me this one, one relic. No, I'm I'm happy with where I've been and what I've got to do. All right. And here's this one from Lost Zorro. Oh, it's for me. <laughs> it says, Kyle, if you suddenly switch bodies with Mephilus, what would you do in Mephilus's body? And what would Mephilus do in your body? And yes, you do have Mephilus powers when you are in his body. Uh, what are Mephilus's powers, Ian? Remind me. Uh, free time travel. Okay. Lasers. Uh, <laughs> hiding inside people's shadows, creating horrible little shadow goblins turning into giant, horrible shadow goo monsters with lasers. Okay. Uh, becoming intangible. So you can be riddled with bullets while laughing maniacally and come out for the better of it. I would do that. That's for sure. <laughs> um, I don't know what I would do with all those powers. I mean, <laughs> something, something would happen. Then again, maybe I just might get tired and fall asleep, which is probably what Mephilus would do in my body, because that's my default. <laughs> or try to sleep, but not be able to. Also a very common thing. Other than that, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? Leave it in the comments or in the chat. Uh, what would you do in Mephilus's body? Me? No, well, yeah, you, but also people listening. Oh. Just use Dan yeah, Green's like, voice to leave emails. That's one from the chat. Thank you. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that one. <laughs> anyway, what would what would you do, Ian? Oh, I would be a terrible dark god rewriting all. I, this I mean, time. I mean, that's kind of what I was thinking too. But I didn't want to be like the. <laughs> I didn't, no, want, no, I didn't no. want to be. I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be the one to say it. <laughs> I I would abuse that power for the benefit of all ultimately, but it would I would be a spiteful old god. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are you gonna do? You can't shoot me. I just <laughs> laugh like Dan Green and turn into mist. <laughs> if that that's reason enough to antagonize people. Indeed, indeed. And this, let us just be sure here: we are not mocking dan green when we say this absolutely we not no his voice is in what the man can do his voice is glorious yes absolutely. he made that character so yeah. please do not misunderstand <laughs> we love what he did with mephilus oh yeah his voice is amazing absolutely all right, from... so let's all right let's we got do our two... last uh, couple super chats we got two more up. super chats here so and then we're going to wrap things up so here's this one from PC the Unicorn. What would a Whisper and Tangle fusion be like? Frighteningly powerful. Mm -hmm. You have the mobility and the raw energy of Tangle coupled with the pragmatism and the training of Whisper. She would be able to get to all sorts of vantage points, snipe you, and then move before you even realized you'd been shot. <laughs> I love it. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Here's one from Sega Genesis 1991, and I think uh, this would be our last question. Why was Big on Prison Island behind bars during Sonic Adventure 2? What's the president got against the guy? I doubt the interrogation process was of any use. I imagine he was looking for Froggy. Mm -hmm. accidentally closed the door behind him and couldn't figure out how to get out. 
(laughs) Until he decided to get out, in which case he just ripped the entire cage bars off the front of the jail and walked out. Oh, yeah, of course. Alternatively, all of Prison Island gets blown up as the smoke clears. He's still standing there holding on to the bars going, (laughs) help. Realizes there's no walls. Let's go of the bars. They clatter to the ground. Okay. Froggy! Where are you? I hope you didn't get blown up. That'd make me sad. I mean, he just walked into Prison Island, so, you know, and he's kind of like just waltzed right on in. Just It's him. Time to wake up and smell the ashes, Froggy. Ah, <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. I'm just getting it. It's getting a funny one here. Somebody says all voices are Chris Pratt now. <laughs> I'm thinking, uh oh, Mephiles voiced by Chris Pratt. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. No. Be a would be a would be a step down. <sighs> At least one step. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Chris Pratt fans, but I mean, he's no Dan Green. No, cannot. No, 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 no. Cannot, no, no. cannot even Absolutely hold a candle. Not. No. I mean, he's he's not even a he's not even a Charles Martinet, but you know, here we are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, on that note, yes, <laughs> we're gonna wrap this up. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on this end of the month spectacular live Bumblecast. Uh, thank you so much for your questions. Thank you for all the super chats. They are greatly appreciated. Indeed. And uh, questions that were not answered on the show, they're going to be put in the queue. We will get to them eventually. Uh, unless they have already been answered, do check out the Q&A master list over at BumbleKing.com. <laughs> see if they've been already answered. And yeah. um, We may get to them eventually. We can't make any guarantees because there are so many questions, but we, we're trying our best here. So please be please be patient. And uh, we'll, we'll hopefully, hopefully get to you. That's going to wrap us up for tonight. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Kyle, for co-hosting. Thank you, Jen, for moderating. And we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. Indeed. Thank you, Jen, for helping out. And uh, that's it. We're done. So bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you later. See you next month. Bye.